transmission lines are super important. They carry electricity so that you can do this. But high voltage transmission lines are usually loaded pretty far from their thermal capacity. Thermal capacity in this case refers to the sag clearance induced by temperature. Check out this video afterwards, it covers all about it in depth. Shameless plug, let's go! Okay, imagine this. We want to transmit electricity to these collection of customers here. The customer's max consumption is around 100 megawatts. The transmission line is designed to be rated at 100 megawatts for efficiency. Life is good and everything is fine. Everything is fine until it is not fine. So many things can trip the line and cause load loss. Things such as birds, lightning, fire, pollution, others, unclassified? Wait, what's unclassified? What? Really? Like, okay man, for those of you who are watching this video, if you want to know who wrote this research paper, then here you go, man. Let's boost their citations. Their paper is now as like, as of this recording, is at 4,800 reads and 52 citations. Let's boost it up. We need more of those unclassified stuff. Okay, back to the topic. So many things can cause a line to trip and interrupt the supply to the customers. And we don't want no interruptions, right? So how do we fix that? Smart people develop this thing called the N-1 criterion. This means that if any single one equipment failure occurs, any single outage, there shall be no overloading and no load interruption. No single line, cable, transformer, or bus bar tripping can result in any overloading or any customer interruption. Well, that's what it means. But how do we implement this N-1 criterion? Back to the earlier example of the collection of customers that consume 100 megawatts. In a basic manner, we cannot allow the tripping of a single line to interrupt our customers. So let's have two sets of lines instead of one, so that if one trips, the other one can still supply. Very good, right? So the total load is 100 megawatts. Let's rate each line at 70 megawatts capacity max. Each line would be loaded at 50 out of 70 megawatts. And everyone is happy, right? Plenty of margin. Wrong. If one of the line trips, the remaining line will carry all the 100 megawatt onto the 70 megawatt rated line. This is now an overloaded line. To save the line from being damaged by overloading and overheating, protection relays would come in and trip the remaining energized line, of course with some time delay. Before any protection kicks in and trips the remaining line, you would have to load shed 30 megawatts from the customers to keep the remaining 70, so that instead of losing 100 megawatt, you will lose 30 and you can still serve the 70 megawatts of customers. But we lost the objective of serving all 100 megawatt of the customers. We lost the objective of having no customer interruption. So that is not good enough. That is why, to cater for the N-1 criterion, the design would have to size the lines at 100 megawatt each. Yeah, 100% increase. At normal conditions, we would see both the parallel lines loaded at 50 megawatts per 100 megawatt, at 50% of its rated capacity. If one of the line trips, the remaining line would carry all 100 megawatt of the load to be sent to the customers. The line would be at 100% rated capacity. No overloading, no customer interruptions. This would satisfy the N-1 criterion. Of course, that is a simple example. In a real-life design, the network could be more meshed up and rather than just having two lines to serve a collection of customers, there will be multiple paths to get to the customer, maybe three or four. There is this thing called the ring system. It is very popular in the medium voltage and low voltage configuration. It basically connects the consumer in a large circular network and if there is any failure of any of the equipments, all the connected consumers will still be connected and this fulfills the criteria of any failure of one equipment will not result in any overloading or interruptions. It's a very smart design, the ring design. If there's a tripping somewhere in the middle here, the other end, every one of the customer is still getting served. You smarty pants may ask, if it's so good in the medium and low voltage, why doesn't the high voltage use this system too? Well, the short answer would be cost. And most people will stop there. Most engineers, most accountants will just stop right there. Cost, that's it. And you wouldn't be wrong for using that as an answer. But if you dig a bit deeper into design philosophy, 
you would find a different answer actually, something more sophisticated. You look into the purpose. The purpose of high voltage transmission lines is to... Okay, okay, listen carefully here. It is to deliver as much power as possible with the least amount of power losses. That's it. Deliver large amount of power with as little losses as possible. Efficiency, basically. High voltage, smaller current, lesser losses. End of story. That is why you will see most of the high voltage lines are actually pretty near to the large power generation injection points. Places where you would experience very heavy power flow. Because the purpose of high voltage transmission lines is to deliver power from point A to point B with as little losses as possible. That is the purpose. For medium and low voltage networks, their purpose is to reach the consumer and provide them with reliable and quality power. That's the keyword. Reliable and quality. Ah, that's where the criteria and the requirement for power quality and minimal interruption comes in. The design philosophy of this is more towards customer-centric. That's the difference here. It's less so on efficiency and more towards making sure the customer gets what they, need, what they ordered. Very similar to post offices. You would have one huge truck delivering all the huge amount of mail because they go in the same direction. High voltage, this efficiency, as much as possible. And then you have the postman on the bikes delivering smaller amount of it, but more customer centric. These are the different design philosophies of high voltage networks and low voltage networks. On the surface and in the simple eyes, one may say that they should be doing the same purpose. Once you go beneath the surface a little bit, they actually perform a different function and require different philosophies. The main principle of not loading any component or any equipment too near to their maximum capacity is so that the component can actually take up more loading when any N-1 occurs elsewhere. This is done with intentions by the system operators. The GE, Siemens or Schneider applications would perform steady state power flow analysis and scan the entire network and then display all their N-1 violations. N-1 violations means that if equipment X trips, then equipment Y would be the most worst affected unit and the overloading would go up to 150% for example. Then, the operators would take action to deload certain equipment even before any tripping would occur. Okay, let's go deeper a bit now. Let's say a tripping just occurred right now. You have lost one equipment with this event. The rest of the equipment is picking up the loading and all your customers are still getting electricity with no equipment overloaded. So, N-1 has happened and it has served its purpose. The system successfully took a hit, it lost an equipment, no customers affected, everything's life is good. Stronger networks with multiple paths for electricity to flow would have a better N-1 performance and less interrupted customers. In the end, it is a customer experience that counts. Transmission companies isn't supposed to ask huge amount of KPEX and not improve on the customer experience. Oh, I need money to digitize my transmission network. And then I need more money to pay license for digitizing this transmission network. And after that, I need more and more money to buy a firewall because I have digitized my network. Then I need even more money to train my people to learn how to operate this digitization. All this happens while the customer experience did not improve at all. Money well spent. So let me know in the comments below where you're from and how often electricity interruptions hit you. You're watching the Funsi channel. Do, 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 